We are ready. All right. Today we're going to be looking at how God answers prayer. How God answers prayer. So I'll start with a story. A story that you may have heard. There was a there was a man. He was in a an area that got hurricanes and flooded. And one day he was a Christian man and he was watching the news and the news said there's a hurricane coming. It's going to be a level <clears throat> five. It's going to be flooding and everybody needs to evacuate. And the man said, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. I'm not going to evacuate. So the a hurricane came and the wind was blowing and trees were, were rattling and, and he was there for a while. Then he saw the flood started coming and his neighbor came to his door. Knock, knock, knock. He said, hey, we got to evacuate. You know, it's, it's going to be disastrous. We got to leave. He said, I'm going to trust God. So he stayed, and then next thing you know, cars are floating down the street. His apartment, the water was rising up. It got into his apartment, got up to his waist, and then uh, it, got, it got up to his neck. So he got out of the window, and a boat came by. boat said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm coming, you know, I'm, I'm rescuing you. You got to get out of here. He's like, I'm going to, no, go ahead. I'm going to trust God. So then next thing you know, the, his, 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 his apartment was covered in water. And he's out there floating, and a, and a helicopter comes. He says, hey, grab the ladder. We can save you. And he's like, no, no. Go on, go on. I'm trusting on God. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, he, so he's swimming. About a half hour, he starts to get tired. And then his, his, you know, his neck starts to go into water. His chin is under. His legs are getting tired. He drowns and dies. And he goes to heaven. He says, God, he said, what happened? You didn't show up for me. I was trusting you. I was trusting you. And God says, I sent you a news report. I sent the guy to your door. I sent somebody in a boat. I sent the helicopter. What else did you want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so sometimes God is responding to our prayers, but we're not expecting his response, the way he's responding. So he's trying to respond, but we're, we're not listening in the way he's responding. So today we're going to look at how God responds to prayer. So it's important to know, so we may be in the middle of something, a crisis, but God may be in the middle of his response to us, but we're not recognizing it. So now we're going to, today we're going to look at how some of the ways God actually responds to prayer. And I guess as a praise report, I will tell you guys... A response I had to prayer. I didn't mention it to you guys because I wasn't sure if it was going to happen. But I've been praying for all of us, everybody in this class, to get all expense paid trip to Israel. All of our flight, all of our food, the hotel, everything paid plus $2,000 spending money on top of it. And God answered my prayer. God answered my prayer. Praise God. He said no. <laughs> but but he answered it. But he answered it. He said no, but he did answer it. Alright. So a little drink. Uh, so, so no is a response. Right. No is a response that God gives. Some yes. people say they wait for answer to prayer. No is a response. So yes is a response. No is a response. What are other responses God can give? Silence. Wait. Silence. Wait. Very good. Very good. Okay. So the the responses we're going to look at. Yes too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can definitely. Also there. Yeah. So the responses we're going to look at today are God can say yes, God can say no, God can say wait. Also, it may not be a yes or no question, so God may respond giving direction or guidance or clarity. We may ask for direction, so that could be a response. And then silence. So yeah, so, that's, so those are the ones I have. So it's important that we, we recognize how God is responding to our prayers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So I'll start with Psalms 14, or Psalms 143.1. It says, O Lord, hear my prayer in your faithfulness. Give ear to my plea in your righteousness. Answer me. So first we're going to look at when God says yes. When God says yes. And so the first way God can say yes is the the Santa Claus response, where you say, God, I want a bicycle, and you wake up on Christmas morning, and there's a bicycle there. Mm -hmm. So you ask for it, God gives you exactly what you want. You ask for a new job, God gives you a new job. Mm -hmm. You ask for a new place to live, God gives you a place to live. Right. Right. You ask for, for guidance, God gives you guidance. And, you know, we see an example of that. In uh, Elijah, when he was staying at a woman's house and her child died, Elijah prayed over the child, said, God, bring this child back to life. And God brought her back to life. So, it was, so sometimes God can just answer your prayer. Just say yes. Just whatever you ask for, he gives it to you. So that one is that one's pretty clear. We, we, we all hope for that one. So that's one way that God can respond. That's one way that he could say yes. But there's other ways that he says yes. So another way God says yes is a seed response. A seed response. So a seed response is when you're, you're asking for supplication, but God gives you a seed. So you're asking for supplication, but God gives you a seed. So you're asking for an oak tree, but God gives you an acorn. Tell him, you're asking God for an oak tree and he gives you an acorn. So he gives you an acorn and now it's gonna, it can turn into an oak tree, but you have to plant it in the right place. You have to water it. You have to tend to the soil. You have to keep the predators away. So the you getting what you wanted is dependent on how you respond to what he gives you. It's dependent on your stewardship. It's dependent on your effort. So an example of that is if you ask God, I want to be a world famous concert pianist. <laughs> and then God blesses you with the talent. So God, you're you're now you're a talented pianist and you can play the piano or maybe he blesses you with an incredible piano teacher. But you don't just now walk up on stage every day and be a world class player. You have to practice and practice and and practice and work and it takes effort and so it's, it's your effort so the the seed response is you're, he's, he's answering it he's going to give he's willing to give you what you want but it's going to take your effort it's not just something that he's going to hand it to you it's going to take effort it's going to take effort for you to get it so God if God gives you a promise he's responsible to keep his promise to you or he's obligated to keep his promise but he's not obligated to keep your potential. So oh, you, but he's not obligated to, to keep your potential. So you may have the potential to yeah. do something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You may have the potential to be something you want it to be. And he may have given you the potential to be a world-class pianist or potential to save 100 people or potential to bring three of your coworkers to church with you. He may have given you the potential but, it's, but he's not obligated to make it happen. It takes your effort. So he's obligated. If he makes a promise to you, I'm going to do this for you, then he's obligated. But he's not obligated to keep your potential. So we have to mm -hmm. partner with him. We have to partner with him, right? We have to do that. So we may ask for something, and sometimes we have to realize that he's giving it. He didn't say no. He said yes, and he's given us what we need to do it, but he's not going to do it all. It's going to take some, some of our effort. It's going to take some of our effort. So that's when God says yes. Hmm. So the next thing God can do is he can say, wait. So he can say wait, meaning that the, the timing is wrong. So it's not a no. It's, it's a yes, pretty much, but it's the timing is wrong. So you're trying to ask for something that 
you may not be ready for right now. You may be asking for this position, but you may not be qualified right now. Right. But you will be, or you can be qualified for. So you may be asking for something that you're not ready for now. Or you might be asking for something that's not ready for you right now. You may be asking for this, you know, oh, I want this person to be for my spouse, but God has to work on them first. Or you may be asking for some position, but the position the way you need it, need, you know, there needs to be something going on in the organization first. So some changes will happen to what's expected from that position before it's ready for you to take it. So maybe, maybe the, what you're asking for needs some preparation, needs some changing. So it's the weight is either you need some change or some growth or the position needs to change. How would that show up? What would that what would like uh, what would that look like? So that would look of these things if it's like to wait. How do we know that that's what he's saying, wait. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna look at that. that we're gonna like? we're gonna yeah, look we're gonna look at that. Okay. If uh so you don't always know. You know, if, if you maybe you get a word of encouragement or encouragement, yeah. but yeah, some, sometimes if you get if you get some signs of confirmation, but the door isn't completely opened yet. Yeah. So so you get some encouragement, but the door isn't open. Or if you get like you feel an, an unction from God telling you to do something that seems like it's in that direction. Mm -hmm. But the path isn't cleared for you yet. Yeah, that's good. So, it's, yeah. it's in there. so if you, if, but if you get a blessing at the wrong time, it could be a curse. <clears throat> and one example we see is yeah. I saw that uh, seventy percent of all lottery winners are bankrupt within five years. I would like to yeah. be part of that. <laughs> <laughs> you like to find that out for yeah, us? Like to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was pretty surprising for me to because I knew there was some number I went and looked yeah. it up. I was like seventy percent five bankrupt in five years because uh, they weren't prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, you well, know the, they got they got a blessing they weren't prepared for. The Bible is very clear about um, you cannot serve God in money. How He right. uh, says those things. Uh, what is the other one? Um, that is easier for. Camel to right. go a needle yes. yeah. to the eye needle. The eye needle. So yeah. money yeah. is is a root right. of uh, evil. Evil. But I think yeah. yeah. The, but love that's the, love, the, love the love of money. The love, the love of money. The love of money. Yeah. The love of money. Yeah. 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 Love of money. Right. So you could love money and not have it. Right. <clears throat> and you could have money and not love it. Categories. But uh, but I think also it's the yeah. If you don't learn delayed gratification or if you spend more than you have at 70,000 a year you're going to spend more than you have at 700,000 yeah. a year mm -hmm. you know if you if you spend more than you have you're going to spend more than you, you're just going to spend more you know if if you if you spend beyond your means you're going to spend beyond your means no matter what the income is that's just a a trait that has to be overcome so one of the, when God says wait, one of the things we talked about is the, the wilderness, is being in the wilderness. So sometimes you have to go through a trial or go through a tough period in order to prepare you. So being in the wilderness is when you're, you're going through a trial or you're going through a struggle, and, but it's, it's meant, it was designed by God to prepare you. So not all, not all situations you go through are designed by God to prepare you. You know, I always use the example, you, you throw a bag of rocks in the air and then you're like, God, I got, I got hit in the head with a rock, why'd you do that? It was like, no, that's what happens when you throw a bag of rocks in the air. <laughs> so it's like every, every struggle problem you have isn't God, but there are times when you go through some trials that are preparing you for something. So God doesn't just use the destination where you're headed, Sometimes he uses the journey. So he's trying to get you from A to B, but it's the path, the windy road to going from A to B that prepares you for B. So it's building your character, it's strengthening you, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's bringing you 
closer to God. So when you're in those hard times, when you have to depend on God, that's when you learn to trust God. You learn to trust God in the hard times. So if you if you train your ear to hear God in the tough times, when you're in stressful, you, you, it trains you to turn to God. If you're in a situation when only God can help you, then it trains you when you're going through struggles, now you can turn to God. So now if you're in a, say, a better situation or a different situation where you're not as stressful, but now you're trained to turn to God. And it was actually kind of like you mentioned last time that you try to pray when there's noise. So you can get, you said, so you can be, you can pray when there's an earthquake. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it's kind of like. That is noise, right? Or anywhere. Right. right. Uh, um, I work, we, we work with stuff that can be explosive and dangerous. Mm. And, and so I, I have even bad dreams about that. And, <laughs> and then so I feel like I have to be able to pray no matter what noise is around me. Right. Right. And so when you go through the tr struggle, it trains you to pray when there's stress, when you're stressed, when you're tired, when you're worried, when you're concerned. And, and it's, so it's going through the wilderness. So we saw that the children of Israel had to go through the wilderness. God made them a promise. They weren't ready. So for 40 years they had to go through the wilderness. So Israel was his, was his, was his bride, was God's bride. No, Israel was God's son, God's bride, God's son. I guess they were both at certain times. But uh, anyway, Israel, Israel was God. I think it's a bride now, right? Well, was, Israel yeah. was God's son, we'll say. But anyway, but he had to prune Israel. So he had to prune Israel that 40 years to, to prepare them for the promised land. David had to go through the, the wilderness. So David was promised he'd be king, but then... You know, years later, he's running for his life in the desert. He's like, wait, I thought I was supposed to be king. But he's in the wilderness running for his life. So it was a preparation. And we saw even Jesus when he was, you know, after he said, this is my beloved son. It says the Holy Spirit took him into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. So to be tempted. So not necessarily to train him, but to tempt him. So the, the going through temptation is also part of of, of the wilderness so going through temptation is, is is part of the training so some in some sense we see you know if you think of the when Abraham he told him to sacrifice Isaac and it was kind of a test and, and it, sometimes it seems in the Bible as if God if is if the faith isn't real until it's tested Sometimes it's, it's, it's about mm -hmm. faithfulness. Yeah. Right, it's about yeah, faithfulness, it's really but sometimes it's you can yeah. you can say you're faithful, mm -hmm. and then like a lot of times you'll see people they say, "Oh, I believe in God, I love Jesus, I love Jesus," and then you still doubt. Then the tragedy, but then when a tragedy happens, when they have a death in the family, when they lose their job, when they, something, then they they turn away from God. Mm -hmm. You know, then that oh, wow. it just shows that their faith wasn't strong. So it's when it's when the struggle happens is when your faith is tested and it kind of seems in some senses that that's when the reality because it's like God knows your potential God knows how much faith you have mm -hmm. but it but it seems like he also wants to you know in, initiate it before he actually will you know consider a true faith and it's kind of like if you if you had to go get brain surgery and they say oh this there's this one brain surgeon he graduated from, you know, Harvard or whatever the top medical school is, top of his class. He wrote all these research praises. He's the, he's the leading in the field. He has never done an actual brain surgery yet, but he's brilliant and he's leader in the field. There's this other guy. He graduated from uh, this this uh, this medical school in Jamaica, but he's done. 30 successful brain surgeries of the exact kind you're going to do and he's known as you know having being the best in that for the, you know which one will you choose you know you want the one who's already done it it's like you can have all the so it's like when you actually get tested when your faith get tested is when it's actually it's like well this guy has all the potential in the world but until he actually does it until your faith actually gets tested so sometimes you have to go through the wilderness to test your faith, to to test it for, 
maybe even for you. Maybe even for you. In my mind, to, to, to confirm it in your, to, you can say it, but you don't really know. Really it. know too. But then you right. can confirm it when you're really going through the tough times, mm -hmm. right. and you can stand with it. Right, it and it's a, it for you. it's a different kind of knowing, I think. So you, it's like you can know, you know, watch all the videos and everything on how to be a great basketball player. Mm -hmm. But if you've never actually played a game in your life, right. it's different from when you, if you actually played and right. you were and you did really good. It's That's a whole true. complete different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah, like reality. Okay. <laughs> it's a different reality. So that's uh, the wilderness. In a sense, it's sometimes it's like a course you're taking. It's a course that you have to uh, to walk through. It's a course that uh, that develops you as you go through this course. And finishing the course is what is what prepares you for for your reward or your blessing. You know what I have found in that mm -hmm. um, is that oftentimes it's not for you. He's preparing you to be a blessing to someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know all the things that you're going through, and it's like you know you're thinking, "Wow, why?" Mm. But then later on, you find out that what you were going through, you're, you're confronted with someone else's situation, mm. and you can be a blessing to them. And it's like, I get it. Yeah, and I don't really know what what that was about. Yeah, that's, you know, yeah, definitely. It's not, it's not instant, a. Okay. Yeah, it's not instant, but it comes in time. You know why you were going, why God was taking you through those things. Yeah, yeah, it's not always about you. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't benefit you so much as it does someone else. It's true. Mm -hmm. Good point. If we're willing to uh, share, right, and help those that are going through a situation that you have gone through, probably. Mm. He'll present it there. He'll present it. Um, Yeah, I hope you wouldn't like be resistant when when the need comes from someone else. Mm -hmm. He'll present it, and you'll recognize it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I would think that he makes it known to you that mm -hmm. it was this. That here's where you're to apply that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you will know all those times. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It, it was about this. This is what mm. I was preparing you for. Yeah. 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 A lot of times you may get that. It's once you, some things you, yeah, you was like, why did I go through this? Why did I, then like when something happens, you go, oh, mm -hmm. now I now mm -hmm. I see what mm -hmm. that was about. You know, in hindsight, you yeah. go, oh, now yeah. I see why I went through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, so some as you're going through the course. So sometimes we we're going through the course of the wilderness, but we don't. We don't pass the trial or the test, but we're wondering why God didn't answer our prayer, or we didn't finish the, the course. You know, we're, maybe we're still going through the course, or maybe if you didn't pass the course, then then you're wondering why God didn't answer our prayer. But may, it may be sometimes that we didn't finish the course that we were. That That's we were so supposed scary, to but then Israelites <clears throat> some didn't make it to the right. promised land. Yeah, they didn't pass the yeah, test. Right. They didn't pass the yeah. test of faith. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right. And so the Satan's job is to make sure is to make sure we don't pass the course. Make you so, stumble, yeah. so make to make us doubt, to make us worry, to make us to tempt us to do something sinful or tempt us to do something easier. Take an easier route easy than, than route. God. <laughs> yeah. than God. It wants you to do. Yeah. You know, I heard it was a song lyric to say, "What's the easiest way to?" To hurt a man, give him everything he, he asked for. <laughs> <laughs> then all of a sudden, he doesn't need God. Yeah. Don't need God anymore. A lot of people, it's like they have to go through hard times before they turn to God. Yeah. A lot of people need need situations. So it's, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. You know, you brought up um, Abraham with mm. uh, Isaac. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, but even before then, <laughs> about... You, and we talk about waiting, right? What about like oh, waiting to get Sarah, yeah. Abraham and Sarah, Sarah, even before right. uh, Isaac? Mm. 
yeah, right? Yeah. And 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 here I am wait waiting on on the Lord to make me into this great nation. Right. And so you talk about waiting. So so they help <laughs> try yeah. to help God, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. with the Hagar, right? right? Yeah. Exactly. So they tried to move. They, yeah, they tried to move their, before before they got a. They they got a clear word. Yeah. But then they got tired of waiting. They're, yeah. like, they're like, okay, yeah. But that's a but 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 that I mean that's a lesson for me. Yeah. You know when we pray to ask God about something mm -hmm. and, and you know, okay, I got the clear word. Okay, I, I'm. Ready. I, I, I know you're going to move on this, Lord. I think we can uh, read whatever we want to read. Uh, probably Sarah said, oh, maybe that's why God gave me all these slaves. So I can have <laughs> through them, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 And so it was like, we, yeah, that's a good point, you know. Mm -hmm. But we got to say, well, maybe is this what God want me to do? Or maybe not. Sort of like, yeah. which goes back to your first story about the man in the boat with the flood, right? <laughs> Well, right. maybe maybe this is God's way of saying, "Hey, I'm answering yeah, so your, your prayer." prayer. So yeah, maybe yeah, I yeah. should right. take my slave, and yeah, maybe. Well, but with well, him, but the, God was very specific. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah, with him, God said, told him that they, those two, were going to have the child. Yeah. So that was <laughs> yeah. Was very specific. And that's the uh, yeah. The next point is that sometimes God will give you a clear word so sometimes God will give you a word to sustain you through the wilderness mm -hmm. so that will be an example of it God gave him a word and sometimes he'll he you may you may get a lot of of uh, repeating of it a lot of validation and sometimes you may only get one but if you know I've heard it said if you get a lot of validation or a lot of confirmation then that means you're gonna go through some really bad stuff because you because he's giving you what you need to get so God is looking in your future and he's seeing what you need to get through. Uh -huh. So he's giving you what you need to get through. Like kind of like when Jesus told the disciples when they were going on the boat, he said, I'll see you guys on the other side. And then next thing you know, they're in there and there's a storm happening, you know, and they were worried, you know, but did Jesus, you know, if they had remembered, Jesus told them he was going to see them on the other side. So they didn't have to be afraid. Or like David, he was told he was going to be king. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have to go when he saw Saul there and he could have killed him. You know, he didn't have to do that. You know, he said, okay, well, God already told me I'm going to be king, so I don't have to take matters into my own hands. Mm -hmm. So David had a similar test. He could have took matters in his own hands, but he decided to wait on God. God told him something. And, uh, yeah, so if God gives you a clear word, it, it can get you through through the tough times. Mm -hmm. and if you're not sure, just pray for confirmation. Yeah, you can pray for confirmation. Yeah. And it also, it, going through it helps to train your ear, train your ear to hear God. <clears throat> and so another reason you may be going through the wilderness is because you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> you asked God for it. So for example, <clears throat> if you ask God, which... We maybe should be, but if we ask God this lesson, God, I wanna, I wanna hear from you better. <clears throat> so the best way to for you to hear from God better, is if you're put in the situation that only God can get you through. And so now you need to depend on hearing from God to get through. Or if you're praying for patience, you know that's what some people say: never pray for patience. If you're praying for patience, the way to get patience is to get put into situations. Mm -hmm. They try your patience. <laughs> so if you're praying for patience, and you get situations to try your patience, it was like, well, that's how you get. That's how you get patience. Yeah, Well, I mean, it's you know, it's it's uh, <clears throat> so you want it, it's quick, but you you may not realize that that is the answer to your prayer. You know, these these trying issues are the answer to your prayer for patience. A lot of song quotes today. It was a song quote that said, uh, I volunteer for your sanctifying, sanctifying surgery. I know your spirit's purging me of everything that's hurting me. <laughs> so it was like, I volunteer to go through the tough times because I know you're working on me through it. I know, I know it's for my benefit, for my good. And then sometimes you will go through and you'll get to point B 
and you will have grown and you will have changed. And by when you get to where you want it to be, you realize, well, that wasn't actually something I, I needed after all. Mm -hmm. You know, and once you get to the other point, you realize yeah. that stuff I was actually praying for wasn't really that important or it wasn't really something I needed or something I wanted. I was like that uh, as a kid when I was 15, 16. Man, I saw this motorcycle, went down mm. to the Honda dealership. It's a brand new Honda 250. Mm. I went home, Mom, it's, can you co-sign for this bike for me, Mom? It's only like $2,000. I mean, it was beautiful. She was like, beautiful, beautiful bike. A 250, Honda 250, mm. okay? Yeah. Now, when I started riding, my first bike was a was an old 1969 Honda 350. <laughs> it was old. I paid three hundred dollars for it. Mm. But even when I got that that old motorcycle, it was a, a 350cc engine, uh, much larger. I, I I to this day I was like, man, I'm so glad my mom didn't validate you mm. know co-signing because that little 250. I see them on the freeway sometimes now, and it's like a little toy. It's like a little oh, moped oh, yeah. compared to, <laughs> to to a real bike, yeah. right? And I was like, I was like, I would have tore that thing up. I wouldn't have been happy with it. Oh. And so I think about that, and mm. even how like God, we prayed and asked God for some things, right. and God might say no, <laughs> because he 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 knows that right. he knows why. Yeah, yeah he, he knows why. Picture. You know, yeah. later on, he, nah, he this is not going to. Want to Right. Sustain you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to explain to you yeah. why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. years later, I mean, now I have a much bigger bike. It's mm -hmm. like it's 20 times the size of <laughs> that. You know, so, yeah. That's good. Patience. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Patience. Yeah. Right. And obedience. Yeah. yeah. So the other way that God talks to us is He gives us direction or guidance. So we're asking God for direction, we're asking God for clarity, we're asking God for guidance on the situation, you know, what is my purpose in life, what should I do about this person who is doing whatever, what should I do about this job situation, Just give me direction, give me clarity. And one way that God answers that is something I call walking shoes. <laughs> With, you, you, you would use your walking shoes, so God gives you one step at a time. Okay, so he doesn't give you the, the full solution. He gives you the next step. So you have to walk. You have to walk. You can't stay where you are. So not, you're not doing nothing. You're walking towards the answer. You're walking towards the, the direction or you're walking towards your purpose. But you don't exactly know where you're headed. But you know you're walking. You, you, got, the next, you got the direction to go. And, and you're walking. But you don't know exactly where you're headed yet. So it's walking shoes. You have Isaiah 30, 20 through 21? Yes. Okay. Isaiah 30, 20 through 21. It says, although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Verse 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. All right, so you're, so no longer will God hide himself. He's going to be behind you, a word behind you saying, this is the way. So he's telling you this is the way. He says, turn to the left, turn to the right. So he's guiding you where to walk. You don't know exactly where you're headed yet, but, but, you, but he's guiding you. So a lot, most of the times when we, when we have a big, huge, complex problem or, or a large goal or a large thing that we're trying to attain, we don't get the full solution at once. You don't get you don't get all the steps of how you're gonna get there. You get you get the next step. God gives you the next step of what you need to do now. And so that's so that's walking walking shoes. And I, I call it walking shoes because again there was this uh, there's a song called Walking Shoes. It's kind of a reggae Christian song. Uh, the verse goes, the chorus goes, Yeah I believe, I believe but it's a dream that I ain't seen yet. Chasing a dream that I ain't dream yet. But I'm going to meet it halfway if I keep on walking, walking, if I keep on walking. Yeah, I know it when I see it. I'm going to keep on walking. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a dream. I haven't actually even dreamed the dream yet. So I don't actually even know what the final dream is. But I'm going to meet it halfway if I keep on walking. It's like, I'll know it when I see it. It's like, I know, I'll know it when I see it. It's like, so I'm, I'm headed towards my destiny. I don't know exactly where that destiny is. But I know I'm walking in the right direction. Because God was behind me. He told me to walk left. He told me to walk right. And that's kind of a... Uh, you know, with this, with this Bible study, with it, you know, I felt kind of that way, and that God, you know, He told me teach, and I was like, all right, teach what? Teach. <laughs> 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 I was like, all right, I'm ready to teach. I was like, that's it. <laughs> so I threw my, hat, threw my hat in a few different options, and, uh, and this is the one that stuck, teaching, and then. Uh, Told me to videotape the first one, so I videotaped it, and I was like, yeah. "Okay, uh, okay, now what do I do with the video?" <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I should make put it on YouTube." So, was like, so just kind of, kind of walk, just kind of taking step by step, leading. It's like don't know exactly where it's headed, final, but yeah. So sometimes you get an unction of God telling you direction as you're going through it. God will, God will. You feel something in your spirit, or you feel God leading you in a certain direction, and so and it's and it's congruent with with uh, how God speaks in the Bible, and congruent with the direction you're headed, and so you 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 want to you keep walking, and so sometimes you get clear revelation to get you through again, and sometimes you get confirmation from you're on your path walking, and then you'll get help. You'll get help, and some, so that's how sometimes God will com confirm you. He yeah. gives you gives you help on your yeah, path. You get help. Yeah. And uh, another way to God uh, God gives direction is to say, "Well, God guides by what He provides." God guides by what He provides. So if God gave you a talent to sing, you know, the gift of singing, then maybe he's guiding you to do something with singing. Or if he gave you the talent to, to you know, love people or, and love helping people and serving people, so maybe he's guiding you to serve. So God guides by what he provides. So if, if your abilities and your interests and your circumstances align up to something, then that's, that's likely God guiding you in a certain direction. So sometimes God will give you direction by what he provided you. So if you're walking down the path, you know, you're walking, and now you get to a fork in the road, you got to make a decision. There's a mountain. You say, I can either go up the mountain or I can try to cross the lake. Then you go, oh, there's a boat. Maybe I'm supposed to cross the lake. You know, God provided me a boat, so maybe I'm supposed to cross the lake. Kind of like with Abraham again. He was, God told him God's last direction was go up there and kill him. But then he was up there and he saw a ram in the book. God provided a ram. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't know anything about the ram beforehand, but God provided something in the situation and that was God giving direction. So sometimes God will provide you with an opportunity or provide you with something and that's how he is guiding you. Like you'll, you'll something will come up that you didn't think about, you know, there'll be an opportunity there, and that's that may be God leading you to to take that direction. <clears throat> you know, I heard it say that, uh, you know, teachers of the Bible, when when uh, so like when I started teaching, I got a a hunger to study the Bible, and most of the teacher, or actually all of the teachers I know, either they had before or when they got the call to teach, they. They develop a hunger to just study the Bible, to a hunger for the truth. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes with, you know, God provides that with you. And that's kind of confirmation mm -hmm. that you should be teaching. Um, and sometimes he guides by closing the door. Mm -hmm. So if you're going up a path and you were, you were going to take the lake and now all of a sudden your boat catches on fire... It's like, okay, maybe the mountain is a better option now. <laughs> or, you, or you realize there's, you know, sharks in the, in the water. It's like, okay, maybe the mountain is a good idea now. So sometimes he closes doors. He, he takes away options, and that's how he gives you direction. And also sometimes when we are 
when he's guiding us, it will be like, we talked about it being like a GPS in that he'll tell us, you know, the next step, turn left, mm -hmm. turn right. Mm -hmm. So he'll give us direction where we need to go. But if you're, if you're on a GPS and you're headed down to Bakersfield or Barstow or somewhere and you, and you get on the, so it's telling, you know, get on this freeway, get on, but once you're, you know, now you got 200 miles to go. If you're like on a freeway, straight path, 200 miles to go, what is your GPS going to be saying? <laughs> Nothing. It's just silent. Right. It's just silent. <laughs> right. Right. So the GPS is giving you the directions. Sometimes it's silent. Yeah. But what, when it's, well, what if you turn the wrong way? What happens? Rerouting. Yeah, rerouting. rerouting, right. Mm -hmm. So what does the silence tell you? You're on the right Sometimes path. Sometimes you're going the right way. Right. right so, so, so sometimes God's silence is confirmation that you're going in the right path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if God it has been directing you, sometimes the silence is keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the silence is, is, is confirmation that you're going on the right path. And that takes us to our next thought of when God is silent. When God is silent. So if you ask God for something, would you rather have him say no or to be silent? Would you be silent? I thought sometimes I would rather him say no because then you know and then you... Move on. move on when it's the silence sometimes you're you feel like you're in limbo it's like okay well now I don't know I don't know what I'm supposed to do or or you know I don't know what the plan is and you haven't said yes you haven't said no so what what now mm. whereas if you get a no it's like okay now you can do something yeah. else yeah any other thoughts? Well, we just said that silent means you're in the right path. It can. It can not, not, not always. <laughs> not, can always can. not always. Not yeah. always. Mm -hmm. it's de yeah, definitely not always. But, it, yeah, it can but, then, be. but then also, too, with that, and like this is good for me because I've been praying for, <clears throat> for direction on certain things. And um, so it's like, okay, God, which way do I go? Do I do this? Do I go this way? Do I go here? Do I, yeah, what? I'm just going to sit here and wait. You know, but then when you talk about the walking shoes, mm -hmm. I got to, I got to start walking. I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to, okay, Lord, I've been asking for your guidance. And so I'm going to trust you that, that, that you will guide me because I've been praying to you for it. And so, Lord, I'm ready to go this way. And so you start out in the direction. This is good for me. And so you start out walking in that way. And then once again, if that's not the way, God's going to, he, he'll get your attention. You know, with those roadblocks, blo it's like the illustration with the boat, right? Mm -hmm. well, okay, Lord, maybe you want me to cross this lake. All right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in this boat. Uh, you know, I can't <laughs> swim very well. I'm going to get in this boat. And so I'm going to go this way. But then you discover the boat has a hole in it uh well okay well i guess you want me to go to the mountain so it's like you know you got to do something mm. right i don't yeah, know if that makes sense yeah, or not yeah that's why i wanted to back up back you up on when you said i decided that i'm gonna go this way well how did you decide to do that to go that way when god closed those doors for the boat yeah. uh, okay let's say for the boat when he when he shut that door down, mm -hmm. like, okay, I see this boat. I'm gonna take the boat across the lake. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, the boat has a hole in it. You ready to put it in the lake and it's filling up water? Okay, so. Oh, okay. Well, so, well, so first you were saying direction. So, I, and it, I mean, when I heard you say, okay, I'm not hearing from him. He's not saying either way. So I'm gonna just continue the walk. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So it must be this, you know, this way, mm -hmm. which is what you were saying. So you well, keep the walking, doing it. the walking, the walking shoes. is kind of a, but you got, you got some inclination of which direction to head. Mm -hmm. So you start. So, so that's, mm -hmm. so the walking shoes kind of assumes you got some, some direction. Mm -hmm. You don't know the full picture, right. but you got some, you got some direction. You know that you're supposed to walk. 
That's why he said he got to start walking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially if you've been praying and asking God for direction, okay. but still yet, it really yeah, hasn't given silent. you, mm -hmm. because you can go either way. May, you know, maybe God is saying, well, you know, you can go this way or you can go that way. You know, I'm going to be there to direct you yeah, and right. I'll be with you. But you can't just stand still. Yeah. Keep praying to God. Yeah. Sometimes you, know, you can. You know, you got to. Yeah, be still and know that I'm God. Yeah. Mm. But it, no, that's yeah, good. What you uh, said, but I understand that there's, there's a. There's sort of a dichotomy there in the sense of wait and keep still or then the trusting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move. Mm hmm. And I pray that, you know, that you're going to guide me when as I make these moves, mm -hmm. you know, that it's your will, mm -hmm. that it's within your will. Mm -hmm. I'm trusting you that it's in your will. I'm trusting you, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start moving when I think I should move. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to yeah, start moving. It's... Even though I haven't heard from you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust that you're going to. Yeah. With me. Yeah. I'm so not there's not. there's um yeah, so we're so we're not at that may be the next lesson of what to do when God is silent. So this is kind of talking about Hagar, but um that's kind of a Pastor Brian talks about the fact that there's a whole genre of books in the Bible called wisdom literature. Mm. And they, those wouldn't be there if, if God was gonna tell you everything to do, you wouldn't need the wisdom to read from the Bible. So sometimes, yeah, he's, he's given us direction for us to make decisions, to make a decision our own. But yeah, some, but it's, it's uh, that's when the, the training to hear is, is, is uh, to discern when, when to move and when to wait yeah. is, becomes invaluable. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, yeah, I guess it's not one set formula, but you can't always just wait. Right. You know, sometimes it's like, okay, I'm, I'm headed to a cliff. Should I, should I stay straight or should I turn? It's like you get, it's like what? Sometimes, no decision is a decision. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta, yeah. you gotta make, you gotta make a decision right away. But sometimes you can wait. Mm -hmm. If, uh, but it, yeah, someone. Well, see, so sometimes when God is silent, the reason he's silent is because he's not being silent, but we're listening for what we want to hear. <laughs> it's like yeah. you've signed this perfect job, and you're like, gosh, should I take this job? No. God, I can't hear you. God, should I take this job? <laughs> it's like your job, where you're at, is pretty good. Yeah, I'm not getting a clear answer. <laughs> so we're we're, like we, we got something right, right, yeah. in specific we want to hear, yeah. or either a specific way, like the boat that we're expecting to answer, and God's not answering that way, or that answer, so we're not, so we think he's being silent, because we're waiting. Another, t another reason is maybe he already gave us the answer. So he could have given us the answer, and maybe we don't accept it. Mm. We don't accept the answer, or, or we just... <clears throat> didn't didn't want to see it yeah. like the boat again or, or he give us the answer in the Bible. So sometimes something may be clear, clear instruction in the Bible, but yet we wanna still ask God on it. It's like and God is silent on it. It's like, well it's like, oh he really made me mad. Should I kill him, God? It's like he's like, oh read go read. It's, it's pretty clear. It's yeah, pretty it's clear. Exactly. <laughs> it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. But I mean obviously not to that extent, but but there's you know, there's stuff that's clearly there in the Bible, but yet we're praying to God, should I do this? And it's clear in his word that that we shouldn't do it. Oh, what should I do? Um Yeah. We have to be careful. I, I, well, this is an example I have, mm -hmm. um, and and just wow, just just praying to God continually, and having a uh, pastor pray with me and stuff, and trying to make a decision. And uh, and not moving on it till I heard from him. And uh, one day while in the service, 
you spoke to me very clearly mm. of what you wanted me to do. And here's where the danger comes. I heard from him. I had prayed that I would hear from him. And when he spoke to me clearly, my flesh said, no. <laughs> oh, wow. You there. didn't like the My answer. My said, no, I don't want it. That's not what I wanted. That's, that not, that's not what I was expecting to hear. Yes, yes. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. and then when I heard myself saying that in my, with the flesh, I immediately just had to pray for obedience. Yes. All right, thank you, Lord, for, for the answer. Now I just want to pray and ask that you... Uh, I pray for you know and for for obedience to follow this to what you're saying. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But so it's that flesh and that's that battle yeah. with the flesh yeah. and the spirit. Uh, I I I knew he was he was giving me my answer. It was so clear. Yeah. But uh, the flesh wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't willing to accept it, and <laughs> I knew that battle was going on within me mm. when when I immediately. Kind of rejected it, mm. but it was so clear. It's like no, undeniable. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, return to sender. Okay. <laughs> 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 Get behind me, Satan! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That's <clears throat> okay. All right. So the next one is interesting. Who has First Kings? I do. Eighteen twenty-four. Yes. So this is an interesting one. The reason why? So this is one of the reasons. Well, oh, actually, so let me preface this. So this is one of the reason. Why God may be being silent. And this is the story of Elijah. So Elijah was one of the few. This is when Israel had turned away from God. They had many prophets worshiping Balaam or worshiping Baal and Asherah. So there were hundreds of prophets worshiping Baal. And, and uh, Elijah came and confronted them by himself. These hundreds of prophets. And so then we come to verse 1. 1 Kings 18.24 okay. Then you call on the name of the Lord of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord the God who answers by fire. He is God. Is there more? No, that's it. Oh, okay. Mine says, and all the people said that is a good idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. well, what you say is good. Yeah, so, okay. so they agreed that, and then what happened, Elijah's God brought down fire and Baal didn't show up. So was God silent there? No, God wasn't silent. What if you were praying to Baal? Was God silent? Who's your God? Right. So that's the other reason why God may be being silent. Is you might be praying to the wrong God. Mm -hmm. Yes. You might be praying to the wrong God. So meaning that in Genesis it says God created us in his image. Mm -hmm. But some people want to return the favor and create a God and create God in their own image. Mm -hmm. They want to they want to they create a version of God that's different than the God that's in the Bible. They create a, a version of God that's convenient for what they want, or that they heard some preacher say and, and they, they took the traits that they liked and they said oh well this is what God is this is what God is like and so you build your own God and then now when times of trouble come you pray to that God that God's going to be silent so an example would be if you pray to a God that has guaranteed that he wants you to have any material possession that is put into your heart you know, any material possession that you think about that you want, God wants you to have it. God must have put that in your heart. Any desire you want, that's from God. You know, that's what a lot of some of the preachers preach, some of the prosperity preachers. They say, anything you want, God wants you to have it. But that's not the God of the Bible. And so when you're praying to that God and he's silent and you don't get it, it's because because that's not the God of the Bible. It's like, well, God, you know, any time... Anything happens, you know, he will heal anybody you want to heal. He'll bring them back from the dead if you got enough faith. He'll, if you want a million-dollar house, he'll get you a million-dollar house. If you want a Bugatti and a Lamborghini, he'll get you a Bugatti and a Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, 
That's not the guy. It's like you're praying to that God, and that God is silent because you constructed your own God. Mm -hmm. That's not the God. So sometimes God is silent because you're praying to the wrong God. Yeah. So he's a uh, he. He doesn't promise to give you everything just because you have faith. Yeah. And that brings us into when God says no. We have Second Corinthians twelve six through nine. Yep. Yeah. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. Oh, this is Paul. This is Paul speaking. Yeah. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. So Paul prayed to God. He said, God, I want you to do this. And God said, my grace is sufficient. <clears throat> so in other words, no. So Paul, did Paul have faith? Paul had faith. Paul had more faith than mm -hmm. we can hope to have. Yeah. And so, but Paul, God said no to Paul. Paul wanted something. He asked God for it in faith, and God didn't do it. So, God, so it's not, you know, just having faith isn't, doesn't mean God has to do everything you want. You know, for example, if, you know, I remember this church, one church L.A. was, uh, this big church in L.A. had a great pastor, a uh, mega church, and I'm sure there were at least a few dozen Women in the church, they were praying, God, it was a single pastor, make this man my husband. And I'm sure most, a lot of them had faith. But would God answer yes to all of them? <laughs> so it's like, it doesn't matter how much faith you have, you can't answer, you can't answer yes all the time. So, so this so now we're looking at when God says no. When God says no, God says no. So sometimes God will say no. It's not, it's not just about how much faith you have. There's sometimes when there's reasons. There's reasons for it. Um, so sometimes you're asking for what you think you want. If we look at the, the uh, story of Peter and John when they were at the gate called Beautiful and there was a beggar there that couldn't walk and he asked for silver. He asked them for for silver, or he asked for gold. He asked for gold, and it says, "Silver and gold we have not, mm -hmm. but what we have we give you freely." And they made him walk. So he wanted. He was asking for gold, but what he got was the ability to walk. So he was asking for something, what he wanted, but they gave him what he needed. Mm -hmm. So they didn't give him what he asked for. So sometimes God says no because. What we talked about, what, what we're asking for isn't what we need. Sometimes it's not what we need. Maybe he has something better, or maybe he has something different. But uh, sometimes we're asking for what we think we want, but God knows that that's not what we really need. It's not what we really need. Or sometimes we're asking for something, and it's against God's will. So maybe God had a bigger plan for us, or maybe, or maybe we couldn't see the big picture. And I went to... Um, Pastor Brian's class last week, and we talked about a. He mentioned an interesting topic when when the children of Israel were, were enslaved by the Egyptians, and they prayed out to God, and God heard them praying. God heard them and heard their they were slaves and they were in a bad situation, and so they prayed to be freed. And eventually, God freed them. But as they were praying to be freed. Were they praying for God's will or against God's will? Did God want them to be free at that time? You know, you would think. But then if you read Exodus, somebody have Exodus 4, 21? Oh, yeah. Keep that thought. <laughs> oh, 
The Lord said to Moses, When you return to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have given you the power to do. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. <clears throat> <laughs> so, so the reason Pharaoh didn't let them go was because God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So they were praying to be freed and God made it so they weren't freed. So God, but the reason for that is that the defeat, the way God defeated Pharaoh with the plagues, if he would have just let him go, he said, let him go. He said, okay, y'all can go. You know, then it would have been, they would have left. It would have been no story. It would have been, but the, the way that he defeated them with the plagues, the 10 plagues was kind of the, the center point of the, that was like the climactic battle of the Old Testament. You know, that was God against the, he said it was God against the Egyptian gods. He said he defeated the Egyptian gods is how he put it. So it was like every god, they had a god of frogs. He yeah. defeated the frogs. They had a god of, of, of fertility, Ash, Ishtar, the god of fertility. He killed their firstborn. So every one of their powerful gods, he showed he was more powerful than. And so Pharaoh saw he was more powerful. But then if you see the story of when they went into the promised land, Rahab said, you know, the Israelites were all scared. But Rahab said that their people were scared because they heard what happened in Egypt. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So like every, everybody in Mesopotamia was was scared of God, of the God of Israel. And, they, you know, they may have believed in multiple gods, but everyone now saw God as the most powerful God. Mm -hmm. Same as Nebuchadnezzar, you know, when he, when the children, when the, when the three Hebrew boys came out of the fire, you know, before he wanted a statue of himself, he was praying, he said, okay, now everybody got to worship the God of... <laughs> so he still had his gods, but he's yeah. like, but everybody got to worship that one, though. Like, this God is the most powerful God. So sometimes God is using it to, for his own glory. Mm -hmm. So it may be, it may, it may not be convenient, or it may not be what we want. And we're, and we're thinking that it's God's will. It's got to be God's will for him to free me from slavery. But, but at that time, it wasn't. At that time, it wasn't. And so it was a bigger reason. It was a bigger reason for it. So that may be one reason he says no. It may be another, a bigger reason for it. And, may, and it may be, we may not ever see that reason. We may not find out that reason until we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we will, sometimes we may not. Another reason it could just be a selfish prayer. It could just be too selfish of a prayer. You know, like James and John is like, Jesus, we want to sit on your left side and your right side when we get to heaven. And Jesus, can you bear the cup that I'm drinking? Did I bear? Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah. And he's like, okay, well, all right, you're going to get that too. <laughs> you'll be crucified and you'll be here. <laughs> he said, but, he's like, okay, but, but what you're asking, I can't give you because those seats are already, those are assigned seats. <laughs> those seats have already been assigned. So sometimes our prayer requests are just selfish. So the question is, is if, if all your prayer requests were answered, Would other people be blessed other than you? A few. <laughs> yeah. A few. A few. In your friends and family. A few of friends and family. Uh, other than your friends uh, and family. Yeah. So it's like, a, it's like if God answered all your prayers, yeah. would other people be blessed other than you? <laughs> I think so. I think um, uh, even if you're not... Um, Christian, when you sometimes, uh, or your friends are not, or your family is not, I think they still under the blessing that God has for you. Mm. You know. Oh uh, right. So I was asking that. So you pray for them, and uh, mm. and right. and I think God is in their lives because of you. Right. Mm. Definitely. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was asking more. Are you praying for mm -hmm. other people <laughs> other than yourself? So some people are only praying for them yeah. for themselves, and so. If all their prayers came true, they would get a whole bunch of blessings, but nobody else would be helped. So yeah, if you're praying for them, yeah, so that's kind of the, so that's good. Let's see, any other thoughts? Okay, 
So for the conclusion, praying for babies. Praying for babies. So sometimes you're praying for something and God is responding to your future. Do you mean things literally or babies who are babies in their faith? Oh. Yeah. You find out in a minute. You find out in a minute. All right. All right. So, so sometimes you're praying something, and God is you're praying for the present, but God is responding to the future. So Isaac's wife Rebecca, she was pregnant with Jacob and Esau in Genesis. She was pregnant with them, and she prayed to God when uh, she had turmoil going on in her womb. She was praying to God, you know, what's going on? And God responded to her. Oh, you have two nations that are warring in you, you know, two nations, and one nation will, they'll be, you know, battling, you know, forever and forever. And she's asking, you know, what's going on in my stomach? And God is like, oh, two nations are fighting. And so I'm sure she's like, yeah, that's great, but I'm, <laughs> I'm asking about this baby. <laughs> so, so she was praying about babies, but God was answering about nations. Because God saw, mm -hmm. you know, way in the future. She was concerned with what's going on with, with now. Right. Am I going to give birth? But God's answer was about, you know, in the future, these are going to be two great nations that are going to be fighting each other, that are going to be warring. And he's like, and he's given her a prophetic word about the future. So sometimes we're praying about babies when we should be praying about nations, you know, or God is answering us about nations, so we don't necessarily hear and we don't understand what he's trying to tell us because what he's trying to tell us is so much bigger than what we're asking. You know, we're, we're concerned about, you know, Jesus said, don't, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow can take care of itself, and we're, we're concerned about the smaller things, but God is answering about nations, and so our, our prayer is big enough. Mm -hmm. Our prayers are big enough that only God can answer them. You know, if, if, if God answers our prayers, will, will nations be blessed or will we just be blessed? You know, are you praying based on your potential or are you praying based on your circumstances? Are you praying based on your potential that God put in you or are you praying based on the circumstances that you happen to be in today? You know, so what does God want in your life? You know, pray to God for something mighty. Pray to God for something that your children's children's children will will read in the history books about. Pray for something that that they'll have plays about. Pray for something that that you'll do that that they'll make movies about two hundred years from now. Pray that God uses you for a mighty task that he's designed you for, that he's designed for your life. Pray for nations. Mm -hmm. Walk in the way, let's seek the truth and live the life. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's two nations at war. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that's great, but I'm talking about this. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I think I heard about that yeah. on the news. <laughs> but yeah, you know, with myself, sometimes I forget that it's it's not all about me. Hmm. I forget, <clears throat> you know, that we weren't created for ourselves. We were yes. created for God's glory, and we are just tools, you know, in God's hands, mm -hmm. tools ready to be used in God's hands, but because of the, the flesh in me, you know, me, 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 I, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> I just, it's all about us, it's all about me, yeah. you know, and I forget God is looking beyond me, God sees a much bigger picture, and so, um, yeah, even with my, with my prayers, and even you talk about, you know, like, you know, we're praying about, you know, our circumstances, yeah. you know, this immediate circumstance, but God is looking at all, 
He's probably shaking his head. Oh, my poor child. If you only knew. If you only knew how, what, how, what, what, how, how I want to use you. He was like, you worried about that? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, you have so much more potential. You know, if you only knew how I, I, I'm trying to groom you, but you keep resisting. And like, uh, we talk about the, the Israelites in Egypt. That's, that's probably one of my favorite um, go-tos. And, and studying because I often see myself in there, mm. you know, and it humbles me yeah. because I, I, I see myself, you know, and, and Pharaoh and the Egyptians and then the Israelites and the disobedience and, mm. you know, I, it's God just puts that mirror right in front of me mm. and show me my, my selfish ways. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was speaking to me as well, this lesson. I was, you know, it's like my, my prayers have definitely been selfish of late or, or not even looking at the larger scale things yeah. that, that I know that God could be doing or that I could be helping accomplish. And just like even with Keith, right? Kenneth. Kenneth. I'll That's give right. you a five dollars every time I mess up your name. Kenneth. <laughs> 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 I don't have a wallet. I don't have a wallet. <laughs> Because like, <laughs> yeah, it was just like even even what Kenneth, Kenneth was saying, you know, praying to ask God for something and God, you know, mm-hmm. gives you this answer. He's like, whoa, wait, you know, that's <laughs> been my experience, you know, because yeah. and and I'm like, God, he's, nah, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want me to do that. Oh, the you, you know, thousand, thousand dollar would you? Oh, uh, oh no, I, something I didn't know, but. Yeah, that that as well, but uh, just like I, you know, God is God brought me here. He brought me here, and He put me back here, mm-hmm. right? So it was like I used to, you know, I started out driving a school bus many years ago, right? Okay. And uh, love what I do working with kids and and the public and that type of thing. And then God <clears throat> raised me, put me in the tech world, mm-hmm. so my income went like here from school bus started out in tech here and then shot up there right mm. for 20 years and then god brought me back down mm. to here mm. <laughs> so what i'm making a month now i used to make every week <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> you know and so uh, when I first lost my job in 2016, I was like, okay, God, what do you, you know, I can't afford this apartment anymore. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I live in a room now, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I went from living in a luxury apartment <laughs> to, to living in a room, selling all my furniture, <laughs> living in a room, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, okay, God, are you trying to tell me it's time for me to leave California? You know, what, mm-hmm. you know, what, 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 what are you trying to get me to do? But I still had this, I had this, 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 uh, this piece or this, this inkling, Reg, I want you to start purging. I just want you to start mm-hmm. getting rid of stuff. And so I started, I started, you know, I had to sell, you know, sold my furniture, got rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, I had three motorcycles. Well, I was down to two then. I'm I'm, 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 I have one bike now, you know, and so, uh, you know, a lot of guitars. I still have like nine guitars, you know. Oh, really? I, I, I got rid of a few, but they keep coming back to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not the collector, just, you play. I, I play. Yeah. Yeah, I play. And so, um, yeah, so, so anyway, I, 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 I'm praying, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then I tried to get another job in the tech field. Because the company I was with, I was at the cutting edge of the technology. I, so I, I just thought to myself, well, for sure, you know, I'm just going to ride these these uh, uh, six weeks out, eight eight weeks out, get my severance pay, brush, get my resume together, submit it. Someone going to pick me up like that because I'm, I, I mean, I'm doing technology, you know, technology that they're looking for, you know, and uh, put it out there. <laughs> Everybody I put out there, uh, no, 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 no leads. Oh, I got contract. You want to do contract work? 
no, what's the contract for? It's four years, for three months. No, I'm too old to be doing contract. I need something mm. steady right now. I live in California. I don't live in Texas. I don't live in San Diego. Mm. You know, so these doors kept closing. And uh, so I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you have me to do? So I end up, you know, getting rid of the apartment. And then uh, I, I was getting ready to pack up and leave. You know, move move to Atlanta. My mom is in Atlanta. I own property in Atlanta. I'm not from Atlanta. <laughs> I don't like Atlanta. <laughs> Bless the Lord that you're able to laugh about it now. Uh, oh, I've always been able to. I've always yeah. been able to laugh yeah. about That's it. That's good. You know. So so I was like, okay, Lord, you're trying to tell me I I need to move to Atlanta? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> you know. And so, uh, and so anyway, I, I went back to the school district, you know, so opportunity opened up to work at the district. So I said, okay, I'll go back to driving the school bus. I already have a pension there. I'll just add to the pension and, you know, see what happens. And it just seems like, uh, about a month ago, I, I was asleep and I woke up. I woke up and, and it was just crystal clear. Uh, there, there's this elderly woman that I kind of take care of that used to go to a church that I used to, used to worship with years ago. And when her husband passed away some 15 years ago, I still kind of see, you know, check on her and see about her and stuff. She's like 85 now. And so when I woke up, it came crystal clear to me. I was like, it was like, Reg, I want you to go see about getting like a condo or something here. And then when Sister Mitchell passed, I want you to leave and go to Atlanta, you know, and take care of your mom. My mom is mm. 75. Mm. And so I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm like, yeah, okay, God. You know how expensive things are here. You know, I have money for a down payment on a place, but who's going to give me a loan? I, I don't make the money like I used to. You know, I can't qualify for a loan, you know. And so I'm like, God, really? You know, so <laughs> so I need to I need to start walking. I need to start walking. Oh, okay. yeah, I need yeah. to put those walking shoes yeah, on. Yeah, he gave you direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll make yeah. it. You don't see it. Exactly. He'll make yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. So sitting here tonight listening to this is like it was good for me. You know, and even I listening to you. Because the flesh gets in the way. I don't want to move to Atlanta. Like, God, no, that's not for me. Let's try Florida. How about, uh, 